warmest greetings, heart and soul family. My name is Sheila Smith, and I'm the proud co-lead of the Prayer and Care Village, and I am a prayer facilitator. I trust that many of you know the power of prayer and that prayer works. Prayer and care's sacred service to our community is consistent prayer in times of celebration, in times of challenge, in times of transition, and in times of change. We pray without ceasing for such a time as this. We offer what we call laser prayer. It is confidential, short, focused, and intentional prayer to support you in knowing the truth through any situation, that God is all there is, to align with your intention for well-being. We offer four prayer rooms, 10 minutes after every Sunday service, and at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday mornings, where you can request a prayer. Additionally, we provide Power of Prayer podcasts. It's available on Anchor, Spotify, iTunes, or your favorite podcast platform. You can also reach us at any time at prayer and care, all one word, at heartsoulcenter.org. We also offer a call in prayer line. Now you can call in a prayer at any hour from any time zone and a prayer facilitator like myself will respond to you within 24 hours. That number is 510-607-7747. One of the ways in which prayer and care invites the community to celebrate is by acknowledging birthdays. If you were born in the month of December, we're happy to celebrate your birthday with you. We invite you to take in the gift of this affirmation from 365 Science of Mind. Today, I walk in the light of God's love. Today, I am guided and my guidance is multiplied. I know exactly what to do, exactly how to do it. There is an inspiration within me that governs every act, every thought, in certainty, with conviction, and peace. And from heart and soul, center of light, we say to you, Beloveds, we know who you are. You are the beloved of God, and we celebrate your light. You are blessed this day with radiant health, expanding abundance, loving relationships, and the wisdom courage, and strength to be all that you are. We love you, we appreciate you, and we thank God for you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. from fragments of faith forgotten and the kingdom of God is within you and whosoever shall know himself shall find it that's that's the whole idea here that that's how it's going to unfold is um oh I see what's going on here my mistake sorry y'all give me just a second because I am determined that's not I'm not getting the right version here is what my challenge is so I'm going to go with what I know do a little old school version of this. So the idea is that the master teacher said, and the kingdom of God is within you, and whosoever shall know himself, herself, has a self-knowing. Whoever has the self-knowing, those are the ones who are going to find it. But for those folks who don't know themselves, for those folks who... 
<laughs> who are operating following a different drummer. Would, th would it work if I said it that way? Or following a different drummer, not listening to the divine guidance. And, and sometimes just saying I'm listening to divine guidance doesn't mean that that's divine guidance. And my sense is that for the adept, there are ways to discern whether, whether the guidance is, um, whether the guidance is corrupt or whether the guidance is pure. And even so, it doesn't mean that it won't include some stumbles. It doesn't mean that it's not going to include a rough road. It will be whatever is required for the healing, for the divine revelation. The master teacher said, Strive therefore to know yourselves, and ye shall be aware that ye are the sons of the Father. Remember last Sunday, we, I was talking about heirs. And how important it is in that relationship to understand that the divine awaits you. So to know that ye are the, the sons, the daughters, the, the child of the Father, and ye shall know that ye are in the city of God, and that ye are that city. So I went from there to, to Luke 8. Because I wanted to, I wanted to really get to uh, where the master teacher is talking about the secret, the mystery. And in Aramaic, it's I'm told that it's the same. It's the same word. The secret and mystery is the same here. So in Luke eight, uh, verse four, is where we we meet the the master teacher is offering the parable of the sower. And when he completes that, that's, I'm not going to go through the parable of the sower. I just want to establish that in Luke 8, where that is told, um, once he completes it, there are, his disciples ask him about that parable. And his response, at least as it's recorded, is that he says to them, it has been given to you to know the secret of the kingdom of God. But to those others, it is spoken in an allegory, in a parable. It won't necessarily be as crystal clear to everybody. That while seeing, they will not perceive. And when hearing, they will not understand. And to me, I wanted to, I wanted to offer that. I wanted to share that because to me, that helps us to, to understand or to, to create a place of understanding for this notion that the kingdom of God is within some of you. And it's not, it's not punitive. It's not that some people deserve it and some don't. It's by right of consciousness. Some folks will glean it. The onus is on each one of us to glean it. But each one of us won't be willing. We'll have our own ideas. We'll have our own purpose. We'll have our own, our own mission. And I don't mean our divine mission. I mean we'll have our own stuff that we're about. We're going to do this first. And so it's, it's not as if it is, this is not egalitarian in that sense. It's, it's the onus is on each individual to do each individual's work. And some wouldn't even call it work. It's practice. It's to be in the practice of divine accessibility. To have a divine listening. I hope this is making sense. 
Emily Cady, last week, and I'm going there again. Well, she didn't do it last week. I brought it last week, and so I'm just going to repeat it again to say she offers us that there is one, one source of being and that this source is the living fountain of all good be it life, love, wisdom, power, the giver of all good gifts. This source and every one of us is connected, every one of us, every moment of our existence. Each one of us has power to draw on this source for all the good we are, will ever be, and are capable of desiring. So it's an open an open opportunity accessible to all who are willing to be and do as is required in order to have. And having is not entitlement. You are an heir and there are still responsibilities of the heirs even. I don't know, anybody who has ever had an inheritance, you know that there are some responsibilities. You could mess around and miss out on it having not dotted the I's and crossed the T's. Being ignorant of what is required of you. Is this making sense? All right, this is important because, you know, I, okay. So look, in Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. The idea, well, it's obvious here, isn't it? That the first idea is not for what can I get for me, but the, the intention is to seek first the, the overarching good, to seek first the divine guidance, to seek first the divine opportunity, to seek first the truth to seek first love and inclusion and acceptance, to seek first the divine opportunity, which is always, or hmm, let me not pretend I know what it always is. To seek first the highest possibility. And once that is done, once one has done that absolute first piece, all the rest is added. The master teachers say, then you don't, you, some of that you were planning on doing, you're not even going to have to do. Because it's set up right from the get, by, by right of consciousness. By right of consciousness. Some would say, when I was coming up, we'd say from Jump Street from the very beginning of the thing. Yeah? And then everything else unfolds in alignment with that. And here's the, here's the rub. Because absent that, absent starting with the, the kingdom of God, absent starting from divine consciousness, if you start it that way, in divine consciousness, it unfolds that way. All else will be added. If you don't start it that way, all else is added in alignment with however you started it. This is why it's so important. This is why divine guidance is seek ye first. All right. It is through Christ consciousness, Emily Cady says, the indwelling Christ, that we receive all that God is and has. I'm going to ask Branis to, to be at the piano for us, please. Because this is, I want to be ready for her to, to move right into the song that is going to complete this portion as I give you these final words as a reminder from Emily Cady that the indwelling Christ, that it is through the indwelling Christ, through the Christ consciousness, that we receive all that the living one is. 
the strong one is and has as much or as little as we can or dare to claim. And the claiming is from that seeking first the kingdom, the divine, because none of us knows what all that can include beyond our individual vision, beyond the, it's, it's in the field of infinite possibility. And so I'm going to turn this over to Brannis. Only love recalls the essence of our spirit. Only love requires nothing in return. The measure of the love we share is simply more the same. The answers to the question you ask will always remain. Only And we question what the hell was going on We could stop and ask the question What does every life require? And the answer would be love For each and every desire Only love Give love a chance Give love a chance Only love, your soul will dance, your soul will dance. Only love, consider this, consider this. Only love, that's all there ever was. What is it that takes me from A to B? That opens my eyes so that I can see the world in a new and a different way it's love it's love it's love that's why i can say if the tables turned and we became the other and we question what the hell was going on we could stop and ask the question what does every life require and the answer would be love for each and every desire only love give love a chance give love a chance only your soul will dance, your soul will dance. Only love, consider this, consider this. Only love, that's all there ever was. Only love. Only love. Only love. Only love. That's all there ever was. That's all there ever was. Thank you. My, f my favorite lyric in that song is, If the Tables Turned, and we became the other. And we questioned what the hell was going on. We could stop and ask the question, what does every life require? And the answer would be love for each and every desire. My sense is that we can carry this with us. 
that lyric that supports us in seeking first the kingdom of the divine, the, the kingdom of love. And all of the words, all of the synonyms that we might use. This feels like, on maybe, maybe it's just for me, but on some level it feels like, you know, a message for such a time as this. When there is such animosity and um, vitriol, And to remind ourselves that simultaneously at the same time, there's love and deep caring and compassion and consideration that all of that exists. And forgiveness, that all of that coexists, even as there's all of the other, dare we say, negative energy. Seek ye first the kingdom and maybe be buoyed by that, maybe be guided by that, be available to it in a new way. Ernest Holmes and Fletcher Harding have a work that, that uh, a collaboration, and in it they say that that scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of God, indicates that the starting point of all good is in our own consciousness. And that's, that's why I've been saying that it's by right of consciousness that that good that we're seeking can only come by right of consciousness. We, would e we could easily lose ourselves in an abstraction here unless we understand that which gives form to our consciousness is faith and belief. And I would add what we know. So it's what we have faith in, what we believe, and then sometimes I've thought that, that knowing is like congealed belief. You know, we've believed it for so long, it's so deep in our consciousness that we know it. So he says that we could easily lose ourselves in an abstraction unless we understand what is fueling our consciousness, and it's what we believe. So if we believe there isn't enough, if we believe that, that we have reason to fear, if we believe, if we believe, then that's what we will, are going to include. That's how we're going to operate in the world. That, those are the seeds we'll sow. Now I'm wondering if I should have talked about the parable of the sower just a little bit. Because this notion of what are the seeds to begin with? The parable of the sower talks more about whatever the seeds are, how they're sown. But there's something to be said about what's the seed that you're sowing? What is that? This is why it says that the master teacher, even though he taught the importance of being conscious of the kingdom of God, emphasized over and over to his followers that it is by belief and faith that we direct the spirit within us to the specific use we'd make of it. Dare I say that that's literally exactly the way it works, that it is done unto us as we believe, which is where we place our faith. The specific use of it. Yeah. Oh, I'm just like getting that in this moment. In, you know, for a couple of years, I think, and we may be returning to it sooner than later, um, 365 Days by Ernest Holmes. And thank you, Pam, for, for supporting us just in just having it just in the nick of time. It, for today, for December 5th, the reading is entitled, Today I Consciously Live in the Eternal Presence. And there's a part of that that I think kind of this eternal presence hearkens to that city of God that I mentioned earlier in, in one of the quotations. 
And I, I just want to, I want to be clear here because that, that city of God that was referenced earlier, or maybe it's, or, or maybe I'm going to, no, I can hold off on that because that's, it, it shows up later. But hold on to this notion of the city of God, this notion, at least for me, I'm, I'm saying that, I'm applying the city of God to today I consciously live in the eternal presence, the city of God that that's my dwelling spot, that like I am the city of God. Does, does that make sense? Now, I'm not the only, but I am. And so we could each be saying, today I consciously live in the eternal presence. I am the city of God. We could each be saying that. So look, here's what, what is said in, um, here's the reading from 365 or uh, is it, it's not for richer living, so it's just 365. So since the kingdom of God is a kingdom of righteousness, and since it's a kingdom that contains everything, then it becomes of prime importance to seek this kingdom, which the master teacher so plainly stated is to be found where? Within the self. That self upon which is set the stamp of the eternal, the God self. The real self is inseparable from the living one, the strong one. So thus, in discovering the self, we also discover the living one, the strong one, the cause of the self. Everything is included within the divine. And since we are in it, because what? Everything is included in the divine. So since we must be in it, it is also in us. And true self-discovery, we've come full circle, haven't we? True self-discovery is the key to the mysteries of life, the, the secrets of life, if you will. One of which is, how does life get to be the way it is? That's a thing for many people. They don't understand how they got there. How did this happen to me? By right of consciousness. Hermes tells us that God has everything within itself as thought, that the whole cosmos itself is a thing of consciousness, that it is all consciousness, that everything that we experience in physical or material form is consciousness, which is why we see it differently. Which is why when you see it, you think it's whatever you think it is, and I think it's something else, and it looks different to us all by right of consciousness. This is the true city of God, the city of right thoughts and right actions, the city that is four square, the length and breadth and thickness of which are equal. So it's all right there. That idea is letting us know, I think Troart does a thing with this as well, this notion that it's all there, the whole truth in the city of God. Where I take exception is that Ernest Holmes then writes that this is the city that St. Augustine also beautifully depicts in, in his essay. But that essay is really, it's really to get Romans out of a sense of, y'all know that this idea of why do bad things happen to good people? So that's where they were. They had been defeated. And they're thinking they're, they're God's people. And so how could this happen to us? And many people were thinking it was because they had departed from the religion they had been practicing and were now Christian. And so it was really a political issue is what he's writing about and bringing folks to another. So, so I don't want us to, this is me, this is me forking my tongue. <laughs> this is me saying, you see, I believe that even a, a, a broken clock is going to be right at least once a day. You see what I'm saying? So, so I'm not offering you the whole thing of this just without an awareness because, because I understand what his essay is about. And, and the good part about it is that he's talking about the relationship of the individual soul to universal spirit, but he's talking about it from a vantage point of considering the city of God, Rome, and nowhere else. 
So he's talking about it for certain people and not in the broader sense that, that this might imply that it is. So I just, that's like an asterisk. Could y'all handle just a little asterisk there to just be sure before we, because I'm not quoting like the whole thing in terms of opening my heart to it. But the point is true. It's just that that particular author was really doing a more narrow application than what we believe. Yes? Okay. So, look, what's true is that the master teacher taught that God is present everywhere. Therefore, God is in each and every one of us, would have to be. There's no way that we could say, even though we do this, that God is present, God is all there is. You know, that kind of flows off our tongue sometimes, even while we follow it with something that makes it clear that we don't really believe that. You know, but it's, it's we got that part down. And the prayer would be that we really get it, that we get it at a level that we're living there. So this is the teaching. God is present everywhere. Therefore, God is in each and every one of us. That there is indeed a law of good that operates on everything and governs everything. Consequently, it operates on your thoughts the way you think them. Now, I just have to... I mean, I know y'all caught on that there are two, three people all the time who don't quite get exactly what's being meant here. That sure enough, the law of good is operating on everything and it's governing everything. It's like, imagine that it, I, I'm going to offer that it's a mechanism. So it's going to do that to whatever you put in it. So if you come with some mess, some messy ideas, some ideas that are not productive in the, in the highest law of good kind of way. It's going to work on that as well. And the outcome is going to be in alignment with whatever you put into it. It's important, I think, that sometimes we, we kind of, you know, maybe skim the part, like the part where you get right away that God is all there is, but you don't really get what that must mean in your life. Speaking to no one in particular, y'all don't have to look like <laughs> I'm not accusing anybody <laughs> of anything. I'm just, I'm just offering that sometimes, and I'm wanting in, in my own life, my, my teaching and, and my practice to, to, to be a little better so that, uh, be different in a way that, that that is clearer to me in my own life, but also as a teacher of these principles so that maybe I can... Um, discern a different way to impart it so that that becomes clearer. You, okay, thank you. So the master teacher also taught that we are to listen to the divine presence. We've come full circle in this. I love it when it, when it all just dovetails in this way. Listen to the divine presence, which is love, truth, wisdom. and beauty. So some would say that that's how you can discern. Is there, in your endeavor, is there the wisdom? Is there love? Is there truth? And beauty. And he also taught, and this I think is key, use the law affirmatively because it acts on your belief. This is, we know that this is a cornerstone to the master teacher's ministry. It is done unto you as you believe. So when you're using the law, you're always using it in alignment with whatever your belief is. So I'm reading this as saying, up-level it. Up-level it so that you are affirming good so that you are in, 
you are increasing the good on the planet. Yeah. Ernest Holmes, er, Ernest Holmes and Fletcher Harding, in their work, their collaborative work, say the overall pattern of spiritual mind healing is a complete acceptance and unwavering conviction. An unwavering conviction. An unwavering conviction of the presence of God as the only source. A deep and consecrated belief in this presence as the source of all there is and the conscious molding of our thought and belief to give form to this divine potential because that's what it is it's in the infinite field of possibility it's the divine potential that we're always working with what will it become in my life what will it become in your life, in his life, in her life, in their lives? What will it become is absolutely determined by exactly what we're saying here. What do they believe? What do I believe? Is going to determine mine. Where is my faith placed? What do I know? Because my knowing could be incorrect. Often when we speak of knowing, with a capital K, we act like they got it right. But in truth, it's just what you claim you know. And you can go to your death knowing that. You know, you can just decide, this is what I know. That doesn't make it true. Yeah. So the idea here is what is it, though, that you believe? Because you're molding your thoughts and beliefs, and that molding is giving form and expression to the divine potential. And this is the basis for every miracle that Yeshua, the master teacher, that the world ultimately came to call Jesus, ever performed, that this is it. It's so knowing at such a deep level, but in alignment with the highest possible truth. And now, that's all I got, y'all. That's all I have for now. And I'm going to ask Brannis to come for our second song. Make sure that it's good, don't want to regret it. Whatever you are, it's glory. Whoever you be, your story. Remember the way of you is rich. Don't ever relinquish goodness in any part of you. There's always a reason for your point of view. Instinctively be that person, the one that you know for certain. Whatever you see, it's magic. Whatever you be, fantastic. Remember the way of you is rich. Don't ever relinquish goodness in any part of you. They always a reason for your point of view. Whatever you want, go get it. Already a part of you. Whatever you need, remember it's you and me. It's 
it's me and you, it's all of us, the universe, the universe, the universe, whatever you want, go get it. Make sure that it's good. Don't want to regret it. Whatever you are, it's glory. Whoever you be, your story. Remember the way of you is rich. Don't ever relinquish goodness in any part of you. There's always a reason for your point of view. There's always a reason because it is you. You are really the answer. You are the ones we're waiting for. You are always the answer. You are the ones we're waiting for. So it is in this awareness, in this consciousness, that I know that I know that I know that there is one life, one source, one source of all being, the source that is the, what did they say, it's the living fountain of all good. It is the living one, the strong one. It is life. It is love. It's wisdom. It's power. It's every good thing. Every good thing, health and well-being, prosperity and abundance of all things good. It's balanced and healthy relationships. And it's us. It's the living one manifest as me. It's the living one manifest as each and every one of us expressing as the truth of our being. So I know and I know that I know that we are always connected, living, moving, and experiencing in, through, and as the living one, divine source. In every moment of our existence, The truth is that we have the power. We have it now. We always have had it. We'll continue to have it. And we draw on divine source for all that we are and will be and are capable of desiring. And so it is in that consciousness and that awareness that I I know and I know that I know that source is my life. And that is... Ernest Holmes said, I live in the eternal presence of source. I know that the kingdom of the living one, of divine source, the kingdom of heaven, is within me, is within each and every one of us. And that each and every one of us lives as the true city of God. The true city of God where life is taking place in all of its grandeur in me. And as each and every one of us, each and every one of us declaring now, I am declaring that we are each the city of God, the divine and perfect expression of the all in all, the perfect source. And I am one with all humanity all that inhabit this divine consciousness that I am declaring as the city of the living one, the strong one. And so by right of faith, by right of consciousness, I know that there's a divine healing in my life and in every life that's willing to claim it. 
I know that it's present. The presence of the divine, like a cocoon surrounding and enfolding absolutely each and every one of us and the whole of all humanity on every level. And so we incubate our ideas, our beliefs, our visions for the perfect and divine unfoldment, the giving birth to, seeking first the kingdom of the divine, knowing that all else is provided in perfect alignment. Oh, so I just give thanks. for the truth spoken, for the awareness, for the wisdom to know, for, the, for feeling sufficiently connected to discern this truth. Oh, I just give thanks. I give thanks for the power of this word. Not my power, but the power of truth. I give thanks. I let go. And so I release this word into the perfect activity of law. I accept it as so. And I seal it for all eternity by simply saying, Ashe. Amen. And so it is. Love matters.